Hello, seventh grade students. Welcome back. You just watched an online lecture dealing with homeostasis and the human body. And the only reason that homeostasis works is because all the systems in your body work together to make it happen. Um, I'm Mr. Schlegel, and this is going to be the first of quite a few online lectures dealing with the different body systems. So this first one is going to be on the skeletal system, and it matches up with your book pages 36 through 43. So at any time, if you want to use your book to match along with this, you are sure welcome to do it. Skeletal system is sometimes one that gets forgotten, but very, very, very important for homeostasis, very important for a healthy body. So here we go. Wait, do centaurs really exist? I have found out one thing as I was looking for pictures. The internet is awesome. You can find pretty much anything you want. Uh, looking at this picture, obviously, this is not a real thing. This is a horse, half a horse skeleton combined with half a human skeleton. But you can see how it would be pretty easy to be tricked. Uh, they actually, it's pretty surprising. They match up pretty well together. The, you can see kind of some similarities, though, between the human body and a horse body. You can see some of the vertebrae look similar, the rib cage, the upper leg, the lower leg, maybe not the hoof part, but there are a lot of similarities between skeletal systems of humans and skeletal systems of other animals. So those of you, sorry to burst your bubble, centaurs do not really exist. There are 206 bones in the human body. In class, we will be learning about 26 of them. There are certain parts of your body, such as your wrists, your hands, your feet, that have a lot of bones in. Your ear even has quite a few. And then there are parts that don't have quite as many. 206 total, though. And let's quickly review the things you probably already know or should know from Chapter 1. The main parts of the skeletal system are going to be bones, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. The functions, there are actually five, which is the greatest amount of any system that we're going to cover this year. So five main functions, shape and support. It helps enable movement along with the muscular system. It protects your valuable internal organs. It produces blood cells, most notably red blood cells, which are responsible for carrying oxygen. This happens within the red bone marrow. And finally, it stores minerals. Mainly, the big ones are calcium and phosphorus that it stores, but it does store some others as well. Bones connect throughout your body, and you've heard kind of some of the bones and how they connect by Hannah Montana's song on the bones. I'm not going to sing it for you right now. I will spare you my singing voice. If any of you have seen me draw before, my singing voice is similar to my drawing, which means not good. You actually do have some joints in your skull that don't move at all. That's why they're called immovable objects. So your skull is made of multiple bones. And the question there, can you think of any reasons why our skull isn't just one big bone? So there actually are a couple reasons. Number one, it leaves room for growth. So when, you're, when you are younger, the bones are not completely grown together. You've heard of babies having a soft spot on their head, right? So eventually your brain gets bigger and there's got to be some growth. So if it was a bone, it would not allow growth out. So that is one reason. The other reason, which is kind of gross and kind of weird to think about, but in order to be born, that one solid bone would not fit out of the mother. So it's gotta be a bunch of bones, so it can kind of squish and move. And I know that's kind of gross to think about, but it's pretty amazing how the human body is assembled in order to make it possible to give birth and continue our species. So that's just a couple of the reasons. There may be more, but as you get older, obviously it hardens and then it becomes, it looks basically like one big bone, but there are joints in it. There are also joints that can move, and there's a lot more of those in your body. Those are called movable joints, and there are four types. There is the hinge, which only moves back and forth. That could be like a knee or an elbow. There is a ball and socket, which allows nearly 360 degrees of movement. 
if you didn't have all that muscle and ligaments and tendons attaching, they could literally move at a 360 degree, but because you have other things attached, they can't actually do that. The ball and socket would be your hip and your shoulder. You have a gliding type of joint, which allows one bone to slide over another. Those are most popular in the wrists and ankles. And then finally you have pivot joints, which allows one bone to rotate around another one. These are most commonly found within the neck and the spine region. That's why you can turn your head from side to side. That's why you can move your body. You can twist your body back and forth. Hmm, which would you rather have protecting your organs? On the left, we've got a picture of two femurs. And on the right, we've got a concrete block. So we're thinking, which one is stronger, bones or concrete? As this, I just kind of took this off the internet, there's a couple, there's obviously plenty of sites you can search for this kind of thing, but bone is extraordinarily strong, and ounce for ounce, it weighs a lot less than concrete. Bone is stronger than steel. Since a bar of steel is comparable size, would weigh four or five times as much. A cubic inch of bone can, in principle, bear a load of 19,000 pounds or more, roughly the weight of five standard pickup trucks. So if you strung one of your bones and hung that much weight on it, um, it could hold that. Now you wonder, oh, well, how do bones break? That actually withstands on how quickly the force is delivered and in what trajectory is delivered. So you could even uh, take a kick from somebody that could break a bone. You might have a fall that would break a bone, car accidents, all kinds of stuff. But in, the mo in most cases, bone will take more force than a concrete block without breaking. So it is very strong and compare difference to concrete, it is hollow also. So the fact that the stuff that makes it up is that strong is even more impressive when you compare the weights. You pick up a cinder block compared to picking up a bone, and the bone is much, much lighter than the concrete, but it is stronger than the concrete. So I will take the bones to protect my organs. I don't know about you. Plus, they're a lot easier to lug around than a concrete block. Here are the different parts of the bone, and you can kind of see the names they're, the words are a little bit small, but you can kind of see them. These would be the parts of the long bones in your body. So the long bones would be your arm bones and your leg bones, both upper and lower. So this type of thing wouldn't be in your skull, wouldn't be in your fingers, wouldn't be in your ribs or your vertebrae. These would just be in the bones of the arms and the legs. So the first part of the bone is a compact bone and it is hard and dense. This is the part that gives the bone its strength. It is generally uh, kind of all around the bone. Uh, around that is actually something called the outer membrane. In the picture there you see it's called the periosteum and this is thin and tough. It covers the bone, helps it not be broken down by the things in your body, whether it be acids or alkalines within your body, uh, the bones are protected from this by this periosteum or the outer membrane. At the ends of these long bones, you can see there, there are something called spongy bones. And when we show bones in class, you'll see some examples of this spongy bone. It is full of holes, and these holes are filled with red bone marrow. It kind of looks as it sounds, like a sponge. And then this red bone marrow, its main job is to produce blood cells. So obviously, through the outer membrane and the compact bone, there are blood vessels that move through there. There are, are holes in the bone, but it is not enough holes to weaken the structure of it as they take blood cells away. The other two parts, there's red bone marrow yet, which makes blood cells, and that would be the part there uh, in the spongy bone, so it's within the spongy bone. The part on your picture where it says bone marrow, that is gonna be your yellow bone marrow, and its main job is to store fat. So it holds fat. Fat is a storage of energy for later on. So when your body is, doesn't have enough food, it starts to burn fat throughout your body. So your body is a, is a self-preservation machine. So basically it stores everything it can to be used when it can't get anything. And that's part of also the storing of materials in your bones also, the calcium and the phosphorus that's stored in there. Are bones alive? Let you think about that question for a second. Are bones alive? 
Now, based on what we've kind of gone over, hopefully, you better believe it. You Hopefully you said yes. Uh, there's a couple reasons you know they're alive. Uh, bones grow. That's how you get taller. They also are made of specialized tissue that continues to form. This is how your skull hardens. This is how your bones get harder. And it makes your bones longer, also thicker. They do add some calcium, add some thickness. And a thicker bone is harder to break than a thinner bone. Duh. You guys all knew that. Something that's thicker is harder to break than a thinner bone. So the more uh, material, the more tissue you add to your bone, the harder it will be to break. So they are alive. They get blood coming into them to provide oxygen. They get blood going out that takes the red blood cells that are formed going to the rest of the body. So how can you keep your bones strong and healthy? And this is definitely something as you grow, you will need to continue to do you guys have your bones are still developing now at the ages of 12 through 14 you know they're still developing it's got to be a combination of diet and exercise the diet gets the calcium and phosphorus that make the bones strong into your body and then exercise brings that from the digestive system from the circulatory system the blood and cause it to be bound in your bones uh, some foods that are high in calcium include, you guys have all heard of the dairy products, obviously, the milk, the cheese, stuff like that, but also green vegetables like broccoli and collard greens and okra, they're also very high in calcium. Salmon, white beans, almonds, sardines, and oranges are another, just a couple few that are very high in calcium. Lots of foods contain calcium as well. So if you're lactose intolerant or you don't drink milk, you can still get calcium to keep those bones healthy. Yum, yum. Uh, cartilage is another part of the skeletal system, and it is not quite as solid as bone, but it is hard as well. It's more flexible. You have cartilage in your ears, also your nose. Uh, it also is located at many of your joints. It's kind of like a padding between two joints. Instead of having two hard bones rub against each other, there's a pad in between them of cartilage. When you were a baby, you had lots of cartilage, and that changes into bone over time. Same thing with your skull being kind of flexible enough to be born. It is made of some cartilage that is flexible to move as well as having those different joints. Here's an interesting and scary fact. Bones in the human body don't completely harden until you are 18 to 20 years old. So those of you out there that play football or do dangerous things where you run into things or hit each other, uh, your bones are not completely hardened until you're 18 to 20. Uh, so basically when you make the most bad decisions of your life, you are the least protected. Uh, that seems to make sense, right? Not so much. What could go wrong? Ugh, yikes. Maybe that's the truth, but I think there's some women that do some dumb stuff as well. And, ugh, scary. Sometimes little kids have no fear. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it is quite a bad thing. I had an experience similar to this. I rode a skateboard down a hill before I really knew how to skateboard. Luckily, I fell into some grass, not on concrete or into a telephone pole like this kid may, or into the ocean, whatever he happens to be doing here. So that's the end of where we're at here. Uh, really, when you think about it, bones rock more than actual rocks. Maybe we should try and make that a saying. Not sure what you guys think. For instance, like doing all these sit-ups so that I can have bone hard abs. Instead of rock hard abs, since bones are actually harder than rocks, yeah, I feel like that has a pretty nice ring to it. Maybe we should try that. So instead of using rock hard, let's use bone hard. But that is the end of our skeletal system for today. Hopefully you have learned something and you can use it to get straight A's in your science class. Thank you for listening.